Hey, Firestarter here, and welcome to Let's Play Galactic Civilizations 3. I am playing on version 1.03, as you can see right here, which is in the beta opt-in. And I highly suggest you guys do that. Unless, well, you're in a current game, it doesn't matter, because it doesn't seem like it's backwards compatible. Either way, one of my favorite features they've added to the game is, uh, well, I'll show you. Before, if you... Well, in my eyes, if you wanted to create a more dynamic game, you wanted to add in more AI opponents, you know, get some more variety in there. And, and to me, diplomacy seems more uh, meaningful when you have multiple uh, players out there, right? Before, you had to create, you know, you had to sit here, press this button, create a custom race for uh, every additional AI you wanted to put in the game. I actually sat here and did this for almost 20 additional races, and that took me quite some time. Well, now all you have to do is uh, come here uh, in the game creation under opponents. You can add random opponents, and it looks like here up to nine. I don't know if that's uh, dictated by galaxy size. I'll just check right here. Uh, let's go with like insane. No, it's still nine. I would like to see this number uh, raise h way higher than 9, but I appreciate the effort. This is a, or was a much needed change in the game, and I appreciate it. So uh, thank you Stardock. Anyway, what I'm going to do here, and actually before I start, I'm going to address uh, an issue, and I've been reading my comments uh, over the course of the last few months. and there were concerns or complaints or whatever you want to call them um, uh, people complained about the rate of the videos coming out and uh, not being able to finish a specific series you know and uh, I've been dealing with a certain kind of sickness which I, I really won't get into but um, just recently have I been able to talk <laughs> let alone stay awake for more than six hours in a day so uh, I've learned to cope with it, and in fact, I'm getting a little bit better, so I'm ready to make some videos. So here we go. I will start off by creating a custom race. Factions leader. This is going to be Firestarter. And uh, there is a default race that relies, well, they don't rely on food for uh, reproduction, they kind of just, uh, you know, they reproduce uh, themselves. I don't know, think like Terminator or something, I don't know. But that's the kind of route I want to go. I, it sounds interesting and I want to try it out. So for uh, foreground picture, I'm gonna look for something that kind of describes this kind of race. I mean, that's obviously one, but I think that's a default. Uh, picture or from the default race. In fact, this is probably a video. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just uh, select that. Uh, background. I'll just go with the picture. That looks cool. Uh, you know, I'll just go with something like that. Leader portrait will have to change. We're not humans. Mm. Right here. All right. Race overview. New race name. I'm not creative. Um, our name. I, I I'm just gonna go with like Fire Nation. Actually, no, because I want to use this race in future games. So, actually, uh, they added a feature where you can act, you can edit uh, custom races and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll keep with like Fire Nation or something like that. Short name, mm, Fire, I guess. Ship call sign. I'm gonna go old school here. Back in the day, you know. Uh, when we had Quake 1, uh, we, we were playing uh, Team Fortress and stuff like that to differentiate ourselves or clans. We used these little brackets and 
Oh, you can't use brackets here. All right. Um, I'm not gonna use a call sign. Homeworld name. We're gonna go with Fire. Uh, <laughs> Fire Nation. Again, not creative. Race logo. I will go with. Uh, I don't know. We'll just go with that. Why not? Star system. There is a starting uh, star system that I thought was interesting. Um, something like this: uh, the ancient, the ancient Iconian, and now your home system. It contains a single class sixteen world. Although I thought I read in the, the patch notes that they changed these to class fifteens, just to keep everything even. I'm pretty sure I read that. Anyway, I'm gonna select that because, as far as I know, uh, the higher class uh, planet you have, the more upgradable tiles uh, you can play with. And for a starting home system, that sounds pretty ideal to me, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, traits and abilities. Now down here I can go with synthetic. This disables food and natural growth. Instead, an assembly project is used to uh, produce citizens. Now, I've been thinking about this for a while because, you know, you can you can pick this and then you know right off the bat that uh, farmers, well, we don't rely on food, so we can pick up an extra two points, boom, right there, and fertile. If uh, we're reproducing citizens, you know, um, we don't really need growth, right? We dictate that. So all of a sudden we have nine points. That is insane. However, I will be adjusting the game difficulty to a lot higher to offset this, uh, what seems to be, to me, it, it seems overpowered to have nine, uh, trait points up here. Alright, so down here... I really like this one where you start with free research. I think you start off with like five free research. Uh, that's crazy to me and that's almost an automatic, but I want to try something out here. And uh, here it is. Planets start with 50% more population than is brought uh, on the colony ship. That seems pretty powerful to me. But in the same time, if we're just producing citizens at, uh, citizens at will, um, then maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe we might not even need that. But I'm just going to go ahead and try that out. So we have nine available trade points. Um, what am I going to go here? Capacity plus 25%. This modifies the amount of mass uh, your ships can carry. That's an easy one for me. And what else? I have seven more points. Don't care about income, influence. Maybe I'll play the influence game. I don't know. Uh, these things up here, it's like a, it's a percentage increase. Um, I like hard numbers increase. You know, I, I don't like plus twenty five percent. I'd like to see like a plus five or something like that. So this is down my priority scale right now. Morale, though, I'll go ahead and take content. To me, this is an easy one. Uh, the game doesn't really show or or tell you uh, how much of an impact morale has on your colonies, but it's huge. So I'll go ahead and take that. I have five more points to play with, so... I know there's one, there's one for moves. Yeah, I'll take plus two. Early on, this is going to help me a lot because I will be generating a very large galaxy map. So, uh, plus two moves definitely will help me out. Sensor range, uh, you know, to me is arguable to uh, not not take this fast trait and take uh, observe it, or even uh, ship range here actually uh, plus twenty five percent. But yeah, whatever. What else do I have here? I have three more points. No idea what I'm gonna 
uh, put my points into here. Hit points plus... I'll take like plus 10%. I have two more points to play with. Modifies how quickly credits... No. I guess I will take research. Alright. Appearance and colors. Uh, I'll go with like this red theme. Yeah. Ship style. Since we're kind of like Terminators, I guess, uh, I'm gonna look for a ship style that kind of, uh, uh, maybe like this. I don't know, it kind of looks like robots create this, I don't know, whatever. Ship colors, I'm gonna go with something dark. Maybe this, um, bloodstone. I have some black and red there. Eh, why not? That looks pretty cool. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll stick with that. On the base tech tree, there is one here that is... Uh, well, here we go. Tech tree for synthetic life. We'll just hold on to that. And the ideology... To be honest with you, I don't know which one... The, uh, sorry, which ones are the best ones. I didn't you know, do any research on it or anything like that. I'm just going to stick down the middle. And I will fill this out because uh, I plan to play against this race in the future. So, uh, these guys are scientific. Uh, if I use chances to come out ahead in any situation, we'll take that. Expansionist? Yeah. Yeah, we'll stick with that. Military is going to be down low because uh, tech. They're going to rely on tech. Uh, we're going to have more powerful ships will rely less on numbers. We'll see how that goes. Expansion growth. I actually prefer growth over expansion. Um, diplomacy can be moved down the list. Logistics. We'll take up a few notches. Influence. Don't care about. I don't know. I'll just uh, keep it as is right there. Save race. Galaxy say, uh, galaxy size and shape rather. Um, I will go with gigantic, and I'll just go with scattered. Why not? Galaxy options. Everything here should be default, and uh, I'll just keep it as is. Victory conditions. I turned off turn limit. It just sucks to win or lose a game based on turn limit, so I disabled that. Everything else is on. Game settings, uh, I was torn between going suicidal and tough, but I don't have that much experience in the game, so I think I'll stick with tough. Game pacing, normal, uh, minor races, I think by default this is set at like rare, uh, I just kicked it up to common, just hoping that the minor races in this game is somewhat similar to the system in distant worlds. If it is. That's awesome. So, yeah, common. Choose your neighbors. We've added up to nine random opponents. All right. And we'll go ahead and start the game. 